The Recovering Democrat, welcome to the show, you guys. Happy Valentine's Day to all the ladies out there and gentlemen that are celebrating another holiday with money that we don't have because of the Biden administration. But you gotta live, right? So that's what we're gonna continue to do. We're gonna continue to live and be the best that we can be. I, again, am Donovan Sadiq, <clears throat> known as the Recovering Democrat ate some popcorn. You guys ever eat some popcorn and it's in your throat because <coughs> it didn't go down all the way but it's like stuck right there and you, you want to grab it out but you really can't. Yeah, that's how I feel like right now. So anyway, uh, it is Valentine's Day and a lot of stuff is on the plate. You have the Democratic Shills out there still doing their uh, misinformation to the black community because the Democrats see that they're in trouble. They are in big trouble and they don't know how to get out of it. Well, actually, they do know how to get out of it. They just don't want to do what they have to do to get out of it. And what is that? Pay reparations to black people. And again, black people, we are not falling for that when I get into office stuff. You've got to pay that money up front, just like you did the stimulus checks, direct deposit it right into the uh, people's accounts, and then maybe we will vote for you right now. They're saying that the Democratic Party has lost between 22 and 27 percent of the black vote. If the Democratic Party loses 20 percent of the black vote, they cannot win. So as it stands right now, the Democratic Party cannot win the election. And Joe Biden sees it. Everybody sees it. They are going on delusion that everything's going to be OK in the end. But just like I've been telling you guys and we've been trying to educate you guys in the new black media, they don't care if they win or lose. They really don't because both parties uphold white supremacy. But when you stop playing the game, you win. They lose. How many of you guys have seen War Games? The movie War Games, Matthew Roderick, Ali Sheedy. Great movie. It, I remember it was it scared the crap out of me when I was when I was a little kid. Uh, I was about 12 years old when it came out or something like that. But I, I thought it was a fascinating fascinating uh, a movie. Now remember at the end of the movie where the uh, computer is going to launch all the missiles and stuff he, and it finally got the codes and it was going to launch and it had them play a game of chess and or no no tic-tac-toe I kept saying chess but chess was one of the games because chess teaches strategy. I taught my nephew how to play chess because it teaches strategy. You got to think before you move. So that's the aspect of chess. So if you've got children out there, especially young males, teach them to play chess because it makes them think before they move. It has a lot of life applications. But in the movie War Games, they play a game of tic-tac-toe. And as we know, tic-tac-toe is a very boring game because nobody wins. Nobody wins in that game. And when the computer's about to launch the missiles in the movie, it finally realizes as it goes through all the different scenarios of how the world's going to end and all where the missiles are going to go, all the nuclear bombs going off. It finally realizes that there's no way to win. So why not play something else or, you know, why play this game? And that's the logic the computer came to. And that's the logic we have to come to as a people. We don't get nothing from the Democratic Party but symbolism. And we don't get nothing from the uh, Republican Party because they don't really give a damn to give us anything. White supremacy is just what it is. So we have to come to the conclusion, stop playing the game. It's just that simple. We just got to stop playing. And then maybe then they will do something different to gain our attention, especially if they want power. You don't see them going to the dreamers or the uh, Asians or the LGBT as a group to get their votes. They're always going to us to get our, our vote and everybody benefits off of our votes except black people. Watch the movie War Games. If you don't want to watch the whole movie, watch the end. 
Watch the end of it where the computer is ready to launch the missiles and it finally realizes there is no way to win this game. Number one, it's not our game to win. Right? So when are we as black people going to learn it's not our game to win, so why play? Why play at this point? Right? We're at the bottom of the economic and social scale. That's not a myth. We are at the bottom. Stop fooling yourselves. Stop patting yourselves on the back because you see all the boule and the sellouts, living good. You got the athletes making millions of dollars. Not everybody's an athlete. Not everybody is going to make it to the pros. Let's just be real about that, you guys. You know, I'm the recovering Democrat. Why am I a recovering Democrat? Because number one, you have to be willing to admit you have a problem. And my problem was I, I keep voting for a party that doesn't do anything for me. So that's a problem. So you got to acknowledge that there's a problem to begin with. Um, I'm, I'm talking to my cat right here. My cat is doing something very strange and it's kind of like freaking me out. So anyway, that's my cat, George, the American Tomcat, known as Maverick because he's a Tomcat. Did you guys get that? Tomcat, Maverick, George, Maverick, Tomcat. I thought it was kind of cute. But he's an actual American Tomcat. So uh, anyway, he has a long story with that. So uh, before we go any farther, I want to remind you guys to uh, go ahead and download and become a member of the African Diaspora News Channel app. Um, you can download it on Google Play and Apple Store and become a member and learn about what's going on in the African Diaspora around the world. Because what happens over there is actually affecting us here. And vice versa. How we do it here is how it does there. How do I know that? When uh, we were fighting for civil rights here, they were fighting for human rights in South Africa, even though it, it took them longer to do it. By us giving pressure to the United States government for our brothers and sisters in South Africa, that helped affect change in those African countries and vice versa. So we have to be concerned about what happens to our brothers and sisters in the African diaspora and at least be knowledgeable, knowledgeable about it. There's nothing worse than being a black American and you travel abroad to see your origins and your, your, your family's history. And then you get there and you're as ignorant as the white person who doesn't give a damn about that country anyway. Why not show up and show your brothers and sisters that you are actually interested in their culture and where they're from and, you know, and how they do things. When I was in uh, South Africa, you know, I joined the Zulu nation and I was given the name Manolo with a click. I can't do the click, but it's like Manolo, Manolo. It's in the middle, whatever it is. And uh, I thought that was very interesting, you know, the, the, the customs and the courtesies over there. Do you, please do not believe in that hype that, oh, the Africans don't like us and whatever. That's, that's not true. That is not true. Okay. Um, that's just something that... Uh, insecure people say we, those people are very welcoming and then you know people are going to say well they liked you because you're an american you got money and that's what they're if you got money who doesn't like you anywhere so so go ahead and, and download the african diaspora news channel app um google play uh, apple store you can get it and you know you can go online itself and go to the african diaspora news dot org and you can sign up there, and that's where I get a lot of my information and news on what's going on in Africa, what's going on in Singapore, what's going on, you know, how they're treating our people around the world, what's going on in Australia. You know, that's where I get my news and information. Um, if you guys know, I'm a big supporter of the uh, e Economic Freedom Fighters in South Africa, the EFF. You guys see me wear my shirt there from, from time to time. My uh, friend Demetra, she is a big Julius Malima uh, fan and follower. So, uh, you know, we were down there and... Uh, you know, just, just loved it. We just had a great, great time. So uh, do me a favor. Go ahead and uh, download that. And also go check out the Philip Scott uh, podcast experience. And, uh, you know, Phil, Phil has been doing some really great work. I've, I've known Phil and followed him for years. And I'm telling you, the, the, the brother started from, um, you know, his home 
and uh, he's still around. He's still doing he's still doing that work, and he's uh, putting people on, which is a great thing. I know a lot of people ask me all the time, you know, am I a part of the uh, African Diaspora News Channel? No, I am not a part of that group, but I am a big supporter of it because, again, my compadre Dimitri K, uh, she is a contributing producer there, and uh, again, from time to time, you might you know uh, see me uh, on the uh, Philip uh, Scott podcast, you know, coming on and, you know, giving my opinion. I think I was on there like last year or something. I forgot what election it was, but we were giving our thoughts on the election and what was going on. And uh, I was invited to come on and, you know, I spoke and we, and we do that. So do me a favor, download that and do not forget to uh, check me out as a contributing producer on the Dimitri K show Sundays, 3 PM Pacific standard time. You know, uh, Dimitri was one of the very first uh, YouTubers to incorporate the uh, followers and the watchers into the show. So it's not just she and I just talking and banter and you guys don't have nothing to say. She actually uh, have you guys participate in the comments and, you know, uh, and, you, and you'll find me in the comments talking with you guys and giving my opinions and all that other stuff. And we had a great conversation tonight. Dimitra launched a new uh, relationship show. So you guys, please check that out at 3 p.m. Central, uh, I'm sorry, it's not 3 p.m., it'd be 5 p.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesdays. Uh, Dimitri K., I forgot the name of the show, but it's a, a, a relationship show. And we did really, 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 really good tonight with some of the questions and answers. And there's all kinds of ways you can do it. And I'll post that a little bit later in the link. Also, you can check Dimitri and I out on uh, Tuesdays where we do a live cast podcast and we do an actual uh, podcast with just she and I about different topics, be it entertainment, be it social, be it po politics. So again, so check us out. All right, you guys. Let, so, so let's get back to, to, to what I was talking about. It's Valentine's Day today. A lot of people don't have the money and the disposable income in their pockets to really go out and do something for their loved one and, you know, take them out like last year or a couple of years ago. Maybe you could take them out to, you know, rude Chris and really do that. Now it's Denny's all American plate because you got to cut back on some of the things you would like to do. Uh, maybe rent is due. Maybe uh, grandma's birthday is coming up, you know, something that's really, really important. But I was out and about and I saw like at Walmart and some of the diff different places. And I'm not, you know, trying to shame anybody. Uh, the corporations are cleaning up. Let me tell you that. They are uh, putting in your head that you have to do these things or it's curtains for you. People are putting stuff on credit that, you know, they, they're not even sure if tomorrow is going to come. If they're going to be able to pay that bill off. All because they can floss you know, their new gold or that new ring or that new watch or whatever it is. But again, everybody's free to do what they want to do. But I want to speak specifically to the black community because we are at the bottom of the economic and social scale. Even though we spend more money than any other group in the United States collectively of what we have. $1.93 trillion in the black community every year, if not more. But, and that's a minimum. And we give 90% of that money back to the other groups and put it back into the economy. I know a lot of people when I'm on the Dimitri K show, they always want to argue with me the basic numbers of where black people are at as a whole. Black people, in my opinion, as a whole, 70% of us are either at the bottom of the economic scale at, or at the bottom of the uh, poverty scale at the poverty scale or just above it. That's where 70% of the black people reside. How do I know this is true? How do I know this is true? When you have 50% of black people that are, are homeless, of the homeless population in the United States, what is that telling you? Mass evictions of single mother led homes in the black community are being evicted. My reality is what I'm seeing outside my door in my community, which was a military community before the base downsized into a reserve base. I'm the last black man standing. If you want to see how successful democratic policies are in the United States, come to Southern California. Just come to California, period. At one time, when you, when you used to be able to say, hey, I live in California, that used to mean something. 
Now when you say, I live in California, people feel sorry for you. They just feel sorry for you. They went and built under Maxine Waters' watch, part of her district, a $6 billion stadium so that rich white people and Asians and Mexicans can enjoy a football game. They didn't put it next to Beverly Hills where the white people could just, you know, run over next door. They put it in the black community, which was a catalyst for the homelessness in, in L.A. at the time. You got this stadium that gives seasonal jobs that have no benefits. Black people got gentrified out of their neighborhood. This is by the Democratic Party. This isn't the Republican Party doing this, you guys. This is not the Republican Party. This is the Democratic policies. And they're doing it with the help of black faces. People like Maxine Waters, Karen Bass, Barbara Lee, Sheila Jackson Lee. To John, uh, to, uh, what's her name? To, to Johnny Brown, the lady that doesn't even know what a woman is. <laughs> Excuse me. This is how they're doing this. And we're allowing it. We're allowing it. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. No, no. I think that's the other way around. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. That's how it goes. <laughs> I kind of felt like uh, George W. Bush right there. You can't fool me again. <laughs> it's insane. It is insane. So a lot of people have been emailing me and cursing me out and, and telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about. I've actually sat and talked to older people that actually will sit here and tell me they will vote for the Democratic Party be just because... They don't like Donald Trump. And yet, when I tell them, what is it, what do you expect to gain in a second Biden term that you didn't get in the first term? They couldn't answer. I just don't like Trump. Forget your personal like of somebody. You're looking at policy. Do you think Trump likes you? Name me any former white president that really gave a shit about the black community. I'll wait. Do you really think Bill Clinton cared about black people? Do you really think George W. Bush cared about black people? Ronald Reagan cared about black people? Because if they did, their policies would, would, would reflect that. But you're worried about Donald Trump. And the analogy that was used was, well, you know, he, he put that ad out on the uh, Central Park Five. And then I had to rebut and I said, well, dude, are you aware that the people that uh, uh, convicted and prosecuted the Central Park Five were Democrats? They were all Democrats and they knew they were lying. They knew. You, Donald Trump was nowhere near politics at the time. And I'm not defending Donald Trump. But you've got people out here that will still vote for the Democratic older people that will still vote for the Democratic Party, knowing we need protection, we need reparations, we need, we need a lot of stuff, you guys. But you're going to vote for a administration that is more openly hostile to black people than any administration before it. As you see the illegal immigrants coming in to the country, that is not under Republican administration and policy. Donald Trump's policy was remain in Mexico. But Biden gets in, opens the floodgates, and by executive order, legalizes 500,000 of them by an executive pin. And these older people still want to vote Democrat, even though these policies by the Democratic Party is hurting their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. What do you do? What do you do at this point? I just don't like Trump, okay? But are you aware 
policy-wise, Trump was not worried about black people in regards to systematically exterminating us as the Democratic Party is doing right now. I mean, it is what it is. What you're seeing in the Biden administration is an exact attack on the black community. No other community is going to be more affected than the black community. Our culture does not in any way relate to the Hispanic culture. But where are they putting these migrants? In the black communities. You've got some Hispanics that don't even want these migrants in their communities because they have their little racism within their cultures. But I'm the one that's paranoid. I'm the one that doesn't know what I'm talking about. My reality is what I see out my front door. Oh, you must be a Trump supporter. What does that mean? Is that supposed to hurt my feelings and, you know, you know, make me go cry in the corner or something? What if I was a Trump supporter? Don't I have a right to vote the way I want to uh, vote? I'm a recovering Democrat. I cannot vote for the uh, Democrats because it's not good for me. Their policies do not, does not affect me in a positive way. And I have realized I have a problem. I was raised a Democrat. I'm voting Democrat, and I don't know why. I, you know, these people don't do nothing for me. They, as a matter of fact, they outright attack me, and yet I'm still uh, voting for them. Stockholm syndrome. You got to know and realize when you have a problem, you guys. At least I know I have a problem, and I've admitted it. But a lot of you guys have admitted it too, and you guys are uh, waking up and. Uh, going into recovery yourself. And I'm glad. And I'm very glad about that. But just like I explained to this person, and I keep explaining to you guys right here, a second Biden administration, and or any president, or any administration, if you didn't get nothing in the first term, you're not going to get nothing in the second term. Why? Because that president is not facing re-election. So why would they care? Put yourself in the president's shoes. You made all these promises in the second term and you know it's not going to happen. It's just not. Right? Ooh, obstruction. You can, you can call it for whatever it is. You, and, let, and let's say you're well and mean and you're well intended in doing what you need to do. But we know how politics works. You're in your second term. I don't have to do anything. I'm on my way out. You can say what you want to say about me. Oh, he didn't do what he said. I got a second term. My legacy is fulfilled. Right? And that's how it works. So I'm sitting here with this older person, and they're making all these excuses of, oh, well, you know, they were obstructing him, and, you know, it's really hard. And she was even saying that they're obstructing Biden. And I had to remind her. Do you realize when Obama came in the office, he had a super majority for the first two years, he could have done anything he wanted to do. He had a super majority and black people didn't get anything. Gets to a second term, didn't do anything for black people. Now he's out the door. Now what? I know a lot of people and I'm not saying, and this is not a threat, it's not anything, I'm just saying, I know a lot of people like myself that when I hear the word Obama, I get upset and I get upset at the fact that here is a man that has the same type skin that I have and he didn't do anything beneficial to uh, my group of people. You have a vice president, Kamala Harris, that I told you she's not going to do anything specifically for black people, but you're going to do it for the Asians, her people. You're going to do it for the LGBTQ? You're going to do it for the DACA and the Dreamers? You're doing specific things for other groups. It's one thing if it was nobody gets nothing. I can roll with that. But you're doing things specifically for certain groups. So when I was talking to this lady, I was like, are you aware that Biden for two years could have done anything he wanted? He had the votes. He had the numbers. We didn't even get a study on reparations. 
So stop making these excuses like there was all these problems. No, the problem was you've got a lot of Democrats that don't want black people to have anything. And Nancy Pelosi being the main, one of the main ones. They don't want black people to have anything. Thus, we are now a permanent underclass. We can no longer wait. Our numbers are being watered down as this invasion happens into our country to where we are going to be, our vote is going to be non-specific and irrelevant at this point. Those are the facts. So how do we solve this problem? What do we do? Well, number one, what you do is you don't give this administration a second term. It's one thing if they had done something to give them a second term. But nobody could ever tell me specifically what the Biden administration has done for black people to where I can tell you guys, go out and vote for the Democratic Party. Nope, I don't want to hear, oh, uh, something that's for everybody. Well, he did forgive some student loans. I don't want to hear what he did for some student loans. I don't want to hear that. I want to, my vote is for sale. Your vote is for sale. I want to hear about what the Biden administration has done specifically for black people. Everybody else got something specific to their group. And again, if you didn't get something in the first term, that president is not obligated to do anything in the second term. It's all cruising down from there because that president basically is a lame duck. So why would, why would he want to do anything? He's a lame duck president. Anything that he does at that point, who cares? His popularity level could be in the tens. It wouldn't matter. He's on his way out. Right now, Joe Biden's uh, approval uh, level, last I checked, was 34%. No president has ever won re-election at this time of year at 30-something percent. Jimmy Carter, I believe, was at 37 38%. He got blown out of the water by Ronald Reagan. So what do we do, Donovan? What do we do? Okay. I'm going to try to drop some science and some knowledge on you guys right now. If you cannot vote for the Biden administration, and you definitely can't vote Republican, it is best that you sit it out. Here's why. Because both parties uphold white supremacy. But if you want to do a punitive vote like I'm going to do, I am voting for the Republican nominee. Now, we don't know if it's going to be Donald Trump. We don't know if Donald Trump's going to be locked up. We don't know. So I always say the nominee. Like I said, I like Chris Christie uh, when he ran, but he dropped out. But like I said, th my vote is a punitive vote. And that's all it is. It's just, to, you know, I would rather let the Republicans uh, take over because politics is about power. I would much rather let the Republicans take over than to give the Democrats another term to wipe my people out. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's the term. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Democratic policies being enacted by Democratic black skinned people. Eric Adams of New York. All this stuff being sold out. And you're seeing all this stuff in real time, people. You know, I used to get on here and rant and rave and get upset and get loud. But you know what? Don't need to do that anymore. People have made their decisions and what they're going to do. And I'm just trying to reinforce to you guys what's at stake here. And what's at stake is the black culture in America, which is totally different than the Caribbean culture, which is totally different than the African culture. We are a unique people in the diaspora 
up until ourselves. I have never liked the idea of being identified as African American. I'm a black man in America of African descent. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about I have African ancestry, but I identify as a black man. When you, when, when you say white man, what are you saying? You don't know if that, that white man is German, Irish, English, French, Spanish from Spain, Dutch. You don't know, but all of those groups mean white. White, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant. All of that, that group, it's all ca categorized as white. When we say Asian, you don't say, well, you know, he's a uh, Vietnamese Asian. He's Vietnamese, you know, yeah, you're Vietnamese American, but when you categorize the Asian, they're all grouped in one thing. You're just Asian. The block is hot, you guys. We are at a crucial time in America where if we don't get it together, and this is just me, I really doubt at this point without reparations that we're gonna make it and without us sticking together. They have done a great job of sending in Sexy Red and your Cardi B's and all these uh, Suki Kuchi Buchi, whatever her name is, all of these people in there to destroy the black community. Because if the black woman does not stand, who is the first teacher and is the center of the community, if you can destroy that woman, you definitely have destroyed the community. You've got these young women out here who are very, very poor mothers. They've bought into the feminism trope. I mean, they've done a great job on us. And I look at other cultures and you don't see that as much. Even in the white culture, if a woman is a feminist, she knows she better have that uh, shepherd pie on the table for her family by 5.30 when her husband gets home. She can rant and rave all day of being a feminist, but when she gets home, she better have that shepherd pie and the, and the meal ready for when that man gets home. But our people on emotion take it to a different level and we interpret it different of what feminism means. And we're on phase three or four or whatever of, of feminism. And the phase that we're on now is to destroy the core of our community. You've got people out here, women are more freer than they've ever been in our community and yet these women are still unhappy. These women are so far gone now, they are tattooing their faces, making themselves unemployable to major corporations, if that's where they wanna work, or if they decided to go into politics. And then they're tattooing their baby daddy's face on there. And if you ask any man, Ain't no man want to be with the woman that has her ex-boyfriend on her face. No, nobody wants to see it. Nobody's wifing that up. They have done a great job of destroying the black family and making sure that we do not come together. And that is one of the biggest fears. If black people come together as a family, then as a community, we are a force to be reckoned with. And somehow along the line, we have forgotten that. Where are our unapologetic black leaders? Thank God for the new black media. I was talking to a person today and they didn't even know what the new black media is. And I told them, I said, what the new black media is, it's really a conglomerate of a bunch of YouTubers and people who are not going along with the government and democratic apparatus of what to say and how to say it to fool black people. I am part of the new black media, believe it or not. Because what I'm saying goes against the grain and it actually is, is, is trying to get us to do something and get something for our vote so that we can survive. I am the last black man in my neighborhood standing. And I don't live in LA, I live outside uh, in Riverside, which is about 60 miles east of LA. 
my neighborhood is all Hispanic now. Most of my neighbors do not speak English. And this is where I'm at. For the first time in American history, we are talking as one group. And what is our talking point? Somebody asked that on, on the show a while back, you know, or I think the other day. What is the black agenda? The black agenda, number one, is reparations. The black agenda, number two, is the re repeal of qualified immunity for these race soldiers. The black agenda, number three, is the, uh, we wanted the George Floyd bill with some teeth. Black agenda number four is the repeal of the 1994 crime bill written by Joe Biden, which incentivizes states to lock up as many people for the private prisons at a 90% uh, rate that gets matched dollar for dollar by federal dollars. There's so much to the black agenda, but number one is reparations. We don't want to hear anything else. And we are not falling for electing people. This is why I keep telling you guys, sit it out. I'm with Phil Scott and everybody else. If you can't vote uh, and get something for your vote, it is best that you sit it out. Because we are not falling for that. Well, if you get me in, then we'll do all this. We did that. And what did black people get? Zero. We even gave him the White House and we've got zero. You haven't heard a word from Warnock. And ISOF. They had the numbers to do what it is they needed to do. Nancy Pelosi did not even bring it to the floor. She did not even bring it to the floor talking about she didn't have the votes. If you've got control of the House, that means you got the votes. It's sad. We gave them the Senate. We gave them the House. But yet... They can't bring reparations to the floor. They can't bring qualified immunity. The George Floyd bill with no teeth. They didn't do anything but give us symbolism. Did not repeal student debt forgiveness. None of that. We are in an abusive relationship, you guys. How many of you guys have seen the movie, What's Love Got to Do With It? How many of you guys have seen Color Purple? We are Tina or Seeley, and the government, the Democratic Party, is Mr. or Ike. We are in an abusive relationship, and it's got to stop. You know, it's funny how I see a bunch of women in my community always big upping the end of these movies, especially when Tina was in the limousine and she's beating up on Ike and stuff, and she finally gets the courage to uh, say no and go on her own and just fight him. But these very same women that applaud that won't do it for their own community. I am shocked and appalled when I see these elected servants. We got to stop saying leaders. Leaders are not elected. Leaders are leaders. They're not elected. A leader takes power. People follow a leader. A leader is not elected. A servant is elected. It just amazes me how they be, ooh, big up and crying, and, you know, as the as Seeley, you know, gains her power and Tina, you know, takes charge of her life without Ike, but they won't do it in their own communities. And it, it bothers me when I see these elected servants like Maxine Waters, Barbara Lee, uh, all of these so-called black women, that's nothing but symbolism, uh, Kamala Harris, when she's black. I don't, is she black this week or is it next week? But anyway, I see all of these women that see our children being mass incarcerated, our women with families being put out into the street homeless, and they cannot come up with a solution. But for some reason, they can champion illegals breaking our laws coming here of their own will and they can put them up in hotels, give them food vouchers, everything they need. But they won't do that for their own people. And I'm thinking, what kind of ghouls 
do we have in our community that call themselves women and mothers that will put other groups, other women's children above their own? It's just sad. I look at that, it's just a sad, 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 I, I, I just don't know what to say. Because women are supposed to be nurturing and, you know, motherly and kind of even handed when it comes to justice. You know, like when you have your siblings, you guys are fighting. And me and my brother didn't really fight a lot. But you, know, you have a disagreement. Mom was the one that came in and, and gave justice into who gets what and how, you know, and fairness. Mom was the one that did that. Dad wasn't about fairness. Dad was about discipline. When dad came in, mom has already made the decision and told dad what, what went down. And dad's going to come in and, and uh, enforce mom's decision, basically what needs to be done. Because, you know, dad doesn't like to be bothered like that, right? But to me, I'm like, what ghouls of women do we have in our community? They know what we need, and yet they don't fight for it. The NAACP, silent. The CBC, silent when black issues happen. This is very scary to me, you guys. I tell all of my single, strong, independent black women, we don't know what the future is going to hold. But how are you going to defend your family? Since you ain't got no man with you, how are you going to do it? You know, are you going to call your father who lives two, three, four cities away? Maybe your brother lives a couple of blocks down the way who has a family of his own. When the shit kicks off, whatever the shit is, when it kicks off, how are you going to defend your family? How? How are you going to defend your family? What, you're going to uh, uh, pick up a rock and throw it? I know you ladies watch these movies like Proud Mary and you know all these really bullshit movies and you actually believe a woman could go toe to toe with a man. You're a 120 pound woman, 130 pound woman and you're kicking the shit out of a 225 pound 6'2 man. I know you guys believe that, but that's a movie, okay? I'm 167 pounds, I'm 5'10". I will destroy a woman that is 6'2", 250, 60 pounds. I will destroy her because of the way I make testosterone. I have denser bones. That's just the way it is. I didn't make it that way. That's just the way it is. And that is a physical fact. That's a physical fact. Now, a 260 something pound man and me, I might have a problem. Why? He has the same basic uh, genetics that enhances him that I have. And he's bigger and stronger than me. I have a good chance of beating him if I hit him in the right spots. But the fact of the matter is, the bigger the man, the stronger the man. It doesn't matter how big a woman is, I'm gonna whip her ass. Simple as that. This is real life, not a movie. Real life, not a movie. We got to stop that. It's just, it's just so sad that, that women believe that, you know, what they see in a movie is actual reality, and it's not. But my question to, uh, uh, to, to these mothers is if you don't have a weapon in your home, how are you going to defend it? How are you, you didn't want no man. Statistically, it is proven single mothers are being evicted at a higher rate than uh, couples that are together, be it they're living together, be it that they're married. That's a fact. But as usual, we don't like to delve in reality. We want to tell ourselves how great we are and, you know, what it used to be and how it used to be. And yet, we are now a permanent underclass. A third of our wealth was taken in 2008 under the Obama administration. And rather than Obama making Americans whole and bailing the American taxpayer out, much less the black people who lost more wealth than any other group, 
he bailed the very people that caused the problem in the first place. It's getting bad out here, you guys. I'm Donovan Sadiq, I'm the recovering Democrat. Yeah. Election is about eight months away. What are you gonna do? What are you going to do?